So, hi, it's Chris. What's happening? Usual story, Mega 4000 this time. Um, what we got going on is this. I have this crazy pinout I need to do. So I got me one of these DB9. It was a gender changer, but I need these little things. Every wire is red, so that kind of puts a hamper on things. I have the ability, and I've shown it before. This has that uh, GVP Spectrum 2824 in there. And this is the regular old Amiga scratched off uh, company chopped down DB20. Five with a little bit of grind because it's not made for the 4000 it was made for the 1200 and the audio connectors kind of hit but you know took a little grind on it it fits it gives me the 15 for a standard VGA monitor you have to have a multi-scan 15 kilohertz through 31 or greater to really benefit from this unless you're going to run mode pro and be in multi-scan only there's some sacrifices to that because you lose 15 kilohertz you lose the ability to boot from a floppy or GoTech or double mouse button support WHD load, lots of things. So the Spectrum here, we have the standard VGA port, but right here it has a DB9 RGB in. The Spectrum came with a DB23 video card, video cable, excuse me. The video cable ran from here and it was about a one footer. It would loop around and go into here. What does that do? It provides a 15 kilohertz signal to this and everything comes out the scan doubled uh, you know video card it's not really a flicker fixer so you gotta run the lower res modes but most of the programs are going to be in the lower res they're not going to be interlaced put it that way I need to make this cable so right now we work in VGA she works fine I'm in multi-scan mode I want to leave it that way alright in the spectrum spectrum I think I'm running 800 by 600 I can take it all the way up to 1280 but the icons are so small my old blind self can't see anything so that's where this turd comes in I'm going to show you the pinout that I have to make because the spectrum has a goofy one and this sucker will just fit right in here and I have a plastic housing that I'm going to hot glue like everything into so I have an actual DB23 to VGA it's unbuffered so I figured this is a perfect candidate now this is a 25 that was sliced in the middle so it actually still looks like a a 23 Great, it's got metal on both ends, and it'll be working perfect. It's a little long, but it's got a VGA on the other end, and we're going to cut that off, and I'm going to use the housing and solder this thing in. I'm not going to bore you with soldering it in, but I am going to show you this picture. So you're going to see here the DB23 connector on the bottom. The DB9 is here, and it starts from right to left when you're looking at it. So if I'm looking at this DB23... Pin one is going to start over here on the right hand side and work its way left. So one through 12 are on the top row and 13 through 23 are on the bottom row. Now, most of the stuff on the bottom row I'm not worried about because all I need is the RGB, horizontal and vertical sync and one ground. The problem is, is this thing, this thing doesn't have a standard RGB pinout. Pin 1 will go to from pin 3, which is red. Uh, pin 2 is pin 4. Pin 3 is pin 5. So see how it's getting a little weird? Looks like we're sticking to the top pins only. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6, 7, 8, and 9 on the bottom are going to be all grounds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bridge all four grounds. I'm going to use the VGAs. You can't see that. I'm going to use the... Uh, bridge all these and I'm going to use the VGA's individual wires. It's going to have 15 of them. Um, but some of those are grounds too. Usually on the inside of these cables they're manufactured a little better than each cable individually is shielded and has a small ground wire attached. So we'll, you, we'll bundle all the ground wires into one big ground. I'm not going to bore you with it. So I'm just going to zap to the future when I have the cable made. So that was a couple hours. That wasn't fun. Uh, I got it in this thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Rona. So this is the DB9. I wired it up like the manual says. I don't know if this is going to work. I didn't have any cool stuff like this side had to like clamp it down. So I did the right thing and just filled it full of hot glue. And it's solid now. I really hope it works before I uh, 
I wrote before I guess I should have tested it before I hot glued it all in but you know I have enough time to do it twice and does this fit <laughs> oh good so I'm gonna do the right thing and I'm actually gonna screw this in now we're gonna plug it in and I guess I'll need a mouse Lance all right I don't like Lance because his button works weird. Yeah! Oh, yeah. So we don't need that thing anymore. So if this works, I will have. Whoops. I will have a double. Ah, oh, crap! This on this side. A double video card? No, not a double video card, but one video card to rule them all. So I have to put it on the Dell because the Dell's VGA signal will do the uh, 15 kilohertz mode. Let me see. This. Oh man, I swear. I'm gonna turn that water heater off. It's like never ending. I n never can do a video without the water heater. All right, so now it's 7.40 p.m. I started this at five o'clock, holy crap. So here we go. I'm gonna pan down a little bit because I'm gonna do, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, I got something on here. Now here's the weird thing about my 4000 before I start. I have a 357 alpha, so it's a 1.76 megabyte Amiga high density floppy. I have a GoTek. This is DF0 and this is DF1. Why did I leave this DF0? Because if I put the GoTek as DF0, high density no longer functions. It only does 880K. So heck with it. If I need to boot from it, I don't play games anyway. I'll double mouse button and I'll choose my image. But if I don't have a disk in, when I turn the machine on, it will not show up in Workbench. Haven't figured that one out yet. So let's give it a go and let's uh, let's let's make sure I'm in VGA mode. Let's turn the monitor on because that would help. We're gonna go into VGA, which it should be on because that's what I was using the uh, the Mithlons on. Okay, so we're in VGA. We're going to turn this on, and I don't get the crazy power button. So this is in Lemmings. Wait a minute. Oh, no. You know what helps? If you plug the other end of the cable into the Amiga, let me turn this off. That's usually helpful. There we go. So we have a DB23 to a DB9 with the crazy pinout. And we should see the screen change. I'm just going to up this a little bit and I'll put the keyboard down here. And we'll just push the button. And I'm going to do the old uh, double mouse button boot because I'm trying to find a thing. If we see this, well, I don't know. Whoop! Yes! So this is the 15 kilohertz because it's saying press return for 31 see 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 that all right boot options df1 is now shown because i have a disc in there let me get to like a amiga test kit adf now it'll boot from amiga test kit <clears throat> which is 15 kilohertz by the way so there she's booting let's back up and see pachinga all right let's see what it says video f6 Flicker free and sweet. Memory keyboard, I all know. You know, there's a weird part with my keyboard where my number pad just doesn't work unless I press the numlock key. Isn't that weird? Oh, now it's not working anymore. Well, that's great. What is it? Uh, control left Amiga. Control left alt, you moron. Okay, let's just do reset. I'm going to leave ATK in the drive because it's a non-DOS disk, but at least it'll detect something in case I need my GoTech. The old, uh, whew, the Sony DVD drive is still working good. I need to do the audio trick that I did to the 2000, if I haven't shown you that yet. I did the 2000, I did the audio trick to the resistors on the board. Now, this machine has a weird issue. If this video card is in it, it just sits here for a second. I don't know why. I need a Buster 11 is the problem. That's in here. I haven't done this yet. 
So that's why this is taking forever. I think it's a DMA issue between my Buster, which I believe is a Revision 7, and Buster controls the Zoro slots, and this is Zoro 2, Zoro 3 card, and that's just having issues. But it works if I just let it sit. What boots faster? An 040, 4000, or a Amiga 3000? I don't know. Oh, 4000. Never mind. Yeah, it didn't want to be up to the 3000 is maybe going to boot. Remember at Roadshow ordeal I showed you? On a plus note, look. Well, let's make sure this comes up. 4000 normally lives right there. Project 1200T is down there. That's for something else. I got crap everywhere. Okay, there's the 3000. She lives. This is uh, now in uh, regular doo doo color. Whatever, color. So I am going to make sure Mode Pro is not running. Mode Pro is not running. I'm even going to uncheck Ask About Unknown Screens. You can see it. Enable screen promotion is not running. Sorry about my water heater. Currently, because the Spectrum likes to save chip RAM because it dumps everything to fast, you can see that I have. 1.9 megs of 1.934 megs of chip RAM, and I have 10 of my 16 left. It's sucking up a lot because the resolution I'm in is I don't know screen mode. We are in 800 by 600 Spectrum PC. There is a 24-bit I could do. We could just use this one 16.7 million colors but I don't really have a use for it and it sucks up a lot more RAM so if I do that currently I'm at 10.1 let's just use it in case I screw up yep there we go can it do it yeah it can but the overscans off and I forgot to turn auto scroll on and that's just it just slows it down I did turn auto scroll on and I can't auto scroll because I have to adjust the monitor. That's the Picasso 96 crap. So we're going to go back to the one that I like. And we're going to get this backdrop out of here because I did a Magic Workbench drawer update because I got tired of seeing all my drawers have. Well, it didn't finish because I didn't choose that. All these had weirdo different uh, drawers. Some blue, some from Best Workbench, some from this, some from that. Now I can pull my, my ADF out. Boy, that's that hard drive is just eh. All right, so let's go into. I gotta fix this. Um, thank you, water heater. You turd. MUI workbench pattern. I'm gonna do clouds again. Test, and we're gonna take out inside. We're gonna take these out because I don't really like these. Save, and quit. This is now has eight megs of RAM free, but I have a 24 bit, well, 16 bit back drop and I just slide Amadoc over. So let's test something that requires 15 kilohertz. Um, I don't know, like directory works. Oh yeah, baby. Let's do AIBB. That's a benchmark that does 15 kilohertz. Let me get intuition based benchmarks, apps and stuff. Where did I stick it? That's what she said. Benchmarks, AIBB. Oops, well, maybe not. Maybe not. It's nice having this work. So now it's truly a one monitor solution if you have a multi scan monitor. And we'll run, I don't know, this one. What is this? What is going on here? Oh, redraw. All right, this is a 15 kilohertz program also. Yay, this is version 324. This is an older one. Everybody, let's run speed. Now, I'm off a little bit. I think it's just the 15 kilohertz -y stuff of the Dell. 25.6, 68 to 40, 80, 82. Motor rolling. Seabeck is off. Turn them on. Turn them on. Can't do cashback cash. Don't know why. I am uh, 0 0.98 on the 4000. I don't know why. Memory. I have 16 megs of Fushizzle and... Two megs of full rizzle. 24 bit. 
and that's normal. Uh, drive speed, nothing spectacular. 1.6, and this one's slow because it's got a bazillion 472 million files on it, and 1.4. And if I hit it again, uh, 1.638400. Great. The cool thing is, is the 15 kilohertz modes work. 15.72. And now, if I mode pro it, I guess I could run it in a higher resolution. But like Opus, all these will run in promoted workbench screens, which is cool. I just use workbench clone. That's awesome. So now my Spectrum card is rolling. Made the cable myself. I looked on eBay for the actual one, but I figured, you know what, I'm going to chop this sucker and if I screw up, I can always buy more cable ends and I have a long enough cable, I could do it many times. I only cut myself once on these little tiny wires and that hurts, but no big deal. So there's my Spectrum. I'm going to give her a full reboot one more time just to uh, see if it boots any faster and we'll get to this later on. But this is the, uh, now if you don't have one of these, this is from Analogic in the UK. This is an Amiga Tech Super Buster 11. I guess I should have put, I'll hold on to this. How about that? Because I shouldn't have touched the chip without whatever. Um, Super Buster 11, this was made in 1992. It's brand new, never been used. NOS stock, I think there was eight left. There was 80 when I started looking at these on eBay. I don't know where they're getting them from. Um, Gadget UK did a couple, and he's like, hey, I don't know where they're getting these from. Uh, it ran me like $80. It was 53 pounds, and that's like 4 million US dollars because of the the uh, conversion rate, exchange rate. But it was like, let's say, I don't know, $80 to $89, but with eight left that you can find, you're not going to find them. So if you need one, F it, grab it, do what you got to do. I am going to run Directory Works because I love that program. Now I can run it without having Mode Pro crap. And it booted a little bit faster. I don't know why. We're going to go to DH0 and what is this one? DF1. And we're going to take these to C and copy them. And quit when you're done. And I still have the, I can drag my stuff. Now it doesn't show me my workbench because, well I just quit. Because uh it's in the 15 kilohertz mode and when it does that the spectrum shuts off and you get your uh, workbench I can toggle through with the tab button and get back and then tab through and get back but I can't display both resolutions of course at once but now since it's copied I can run sysinfo let's see what sysinfo1 was I think it's just a newer version or the same version I don't know one of them had a virus I probably have the virus now 324 right and sysinfo, whoops, not amadoc, you poo poo. All right, let me get E. Sysinfo. This is the exact, oh, 4.0. Ooh, schmancy. Don't know why my copy back cache will not turn on. Maybe I don't have it. Don't know. Let's see if this one looks a little better. I don't really see a difference. Alright, we're finally 1.0 to the itself, so that's cool. Is my drive speed any faster? What was it, 1.6? 1.6. DH0 any faster? No, it's not. <laughs> Big mama. Uh. I didn't have to uh, like do anything crazy to it, it's just a big drive. So, that's cool. 15 kilohertz works, 24 bit works, and uh... That's, that's that, that makes me happy now. I will start using this more. I was not using this as much because Mode Pro is wonderful, but some of my utilities look better. You can turn on planar and get the screens to look a little better, but yeah, this is much, much better. Um, if you have any idea why my GoTech works if I have a disc in the drive, but watch, disc is out. We're going to triple finger. We're going to let it boot with no GoTech in the drive. And what will happen is, I'll just double mouse button to show you. So here's double mouse button. If I boot options, look, it's not even there. It's like it doesn't exist. It's weird. And if I boot, 
plug it plug the drive in you've seen it I plug this in get in there let it blink okay empty master reboot double mouse button so just hold them both we'll get a weird doo 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 let me let go and then boot options there it is isn't it the craziest thing? DF1 is enabled. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's a jumper. I don't know. I was going to enable motor control since it's DF1. I had to do that on my external and it seemed to help. But I don't know. I don't have the problem with the disk drive light. A lot of times if you use a GoTech, it will uh, make this light up while you're using this. I don't have that problem. The cables are correct with the flip and yep. Yeah. I don't know. So you saw it light up. It's reading empty copy this. There's checking DF0, checking DF1, and the hard drive will start to boot. So here we are. We're booting slightly faster. Once I get that Buster 11 in, things will be better. But anyway, everybody, thanks for watching. That is my Spectrum cable. I will leave the JPEG of the pinouts for the GBP card if you need it. I'll stick it on my Google Drive linked down there below and feel free to comment, like, subscribe. If you would like to support me, I would greatly appreciate it. Once I get enough people, I will start putting their names in the credits. And I'm sorry, my current patrons, I haven't put your name in the credits, but it would be by so fast you'd still fit in my 10 second uh, buy part. But I'll do it. I will do it. But if you would like to support me on Patreon, it would be greatly appreciated. This is currently uh, sponsored by my wallet, and keeping videos going every week is quite expensive, and anything I can do to get assistance is greatly, greatly appreciated. So thank you for watching, as always, and I hope you learned something.